Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to make a start, even though we have a, a lot more registered, we're going to make a start with this. So um, good afternoon. Uh, as you see, and maybe in the chat box, that um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, and we will stop it for questions. We'll stop the, the recording um, at the end for questions. So this webinar today um, is time off for unseen events. And my two colleagues, Alistair Donaghy from NEU and Stephen McCord from UTU will also be taking, helping with the questions at the end. But we decided to do this webinar following on from ones we had done in relation to time off for other issues. So the other known events, if you know you're going to need to get time off, you would look at the brief absences, which we've done a webinar on before, career break, temporary variation, job share, and flexible working. And most of these have been covered in previous webinars, which you can access on all of our websites and our YouTube channel. These are actually where you know in advance that you're going to be off um, and you're requesting the time off from your principal or board of governors in advance. The brief absences actually does refer to absences of up to three days and that's with pay. Um, so as we go through this, you'll see the difference between pay and unpay, unpaid. Sick leave is another one and that can be planned and unplanned. Um, if it's planned, you know, you're, maybe you're going for an operation um, or uh, maybe you know you're going to be off for a long period of time, etc. you're able to plan that in advance. However, most sick leave will be unplanned and it will fall into this category, although there are differences for sick leave and we're going to go through some of the different procedures in relation to that as we go through. So the other kind of absences then we're talking about are unplanned absences. And this is one or maybe more days or part of a day um, where if you have, um, if you're coming into work in the morning, something happens before you go in, something happens during the day or something happens after the school day in which are totally unplanned. There may be an emergency situation or it may be an unforeseen event. So the kind of categories that this covers would be bereavement. Um, that's something that is unplanned. Um, illness of a child, and this is one probably very common. Car breakdown or accident, and that can be particularly on the way to work. A parent falls or takes ill, and this is supposed is becoming more common now as people are, are um, living longer. Or maybe the house broken into or a flood. There might be an, an upsetting conversation with a colleague a stressful incident with a parent, physical or verbal assault by a pupil. So in relation to these, some will be things that happen, um, may have happened early in the morning. They may happen, some of them particularly say, um, illness of a child, car breakdown, parent falls or takes ill, or um, the flood perhaps, um, or um, a stressful incident with a parent or an upsetting conversation with a colleague. Any of these can take place before, during or after school. And they are things that you're not going to be able to go to your principal in advance to discuss. So in these kinds of situations that we're talking about, and these are the kinds of things that people would contact us about, we're trying to give you in this what to do. So while I'm saying here, check the school policy, I don't mean that you would check that, obviously, at the time that something happens. But if you check it now and see actually what does your school policy say in relation to contacting? And I think that was where we come on to number two is contact the principal. If it's early morning and it's before school and you're either going to be late or you're not going to be in, your school will have a policy which says who you're supposed to contact, who would be your point of contact, um, and whether that's to ring or to send a message or whatever way you have to do it. So that's the first thing that you do. If it's during the school day, please make sure that you do not leave the premises without contacting the principal or vice principal or whoever is in a senior leadership role. If, you, if it's an emergency situation and you're unable to actually contact the principal per se, make sure that it's somebody in a senior leadership position and that then you contact the principal as soon as you can after that. So the third thing then is about the duration of leave. 
And that will depend on what the issue is, um, how long um, it's likely to be. For example, if you have a parent who falls, well, it may be that you're going to have to make um, arrangements, not just on that day, but going forward. And you may have to look at that. But it may be that it was just an accident on the way to school that you're going to be delayed. Um, so you may be in within half an hour, an hour, whatever. But you need to be clear, as clear as you can be, because not all situations you're going to be able to be very clear, but as clear as you can be at that point when you tell the principal or someone in senior leadership as to why you will not be in the school. And this is about you not being available for work for whatever reason and for whatever duration that is. The other thing then you want to look at is, is it paid or unpaid leave? And this is where we go back to the procedures that I outlined at the start. Because if you look at brief absences, well, it may be that the leave that you're looking for, say example, bereavement, that does cover um, bereavement in relation to a close relative and it gives you up to three days um, paid leave. Um, but it may be that, as I said, it it is there's a, a flood or the house has been broken into or that you've had an upsetting conversation with a colleague. It may be that some of these are unpaid. And that's where you need to be aware which is paid, which is unpaid, and then what you do in relation to that. And that's where we come on to which policy. And there are a plethora of policies there, but there are a few that you really need to be aware of. And I'm, I'm actually going to go to this screen in relation to, there's a lot of policies and procedures. Um, and it, there, there is a lot that is covered here, um, but two that I think you need to be very much aware of, which is actually the teacher attendance procedure and the statutory annual leave entitlement and long-term sickness absence, because they will have um, a, a big impact on what absence you will be able to take and how you will be able to take it. There is another one there, um, second from the bottom, Teachers Parental Leave Scheme, um, DE Circular 2014-5, which many teachers may not be aware of. And that is not one we've actually covered before, but that actually gives um, teachers the right to take up to four weeks leave per child for a child under age five um, during the year, but it is unpaid and it has to be in um, periods of a week. Um, so one week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. But it is it is unpaid. But it is worth looking at that if you are in a position where you need to, to consider that, that you will be able to do that. The teacher attendance procedure is important because you may be in a position where whatever is happening and say it's a it's a conversation um, with a parent that has maybe turned nasty and has actually caused you a lot of stress. It may even be with a colleague. Um, it may be that you have been um, uh, verbally or physically um, abused by a child or hopefully not by an adult. Um, so there are things there that you will have to look at. And in all those circumstances, what we would advise is that you contact your doctor for advice in relation to your fitness to be at work. Because it's on that basis that if you're not fit to be in work, that would be could potentially be sick leave. And then the paid sick leave um, would kick in provided you are in a permanent um, contract or at least a one year contract. The DE circular 2014-18 there at the bottom is the teacher's absence is not exceeding three working days. And that's where we cover in relation to a lot of planned absences. But sometimes an unplanned absence can lead into a planned absence. For example, one of them within the um in within that that uh, circular is covered where it's um sick, uh, serious illness of a member of the teacher's household. So say for example, hopefully not, but say some, something happened to one of your household that is an un unplanned absence, but it could be covered um by the serious illness of a of a member of the teacher's household. So there are lots of issues there. Flexible working will also cover in relation to if you need to, what some people are referring to as carers leave. But this is actually not, not like for one day. This is actually for a longer period. 
So, for example, say you do have a child who's off long term sick or you do have a parent who um, requires long term um, care as well. And it may be that you want to reduce your days, your hours or take some unpaid leave um, to accommodate that. So there are a number of procedures there which need to be looked at. But we also need to be very careful in relation to anything that happens just before, during or just after the working day that the principal or whoever the senior leader is in the school responsible for leave, etc., whoever it is, and that will be determined in each of the schools, um, is made aware of. And one of the things we would also encourage is all, to all our principal members is that they would treat requests from teachers in relation to this type of absence and others um, with compassion, because we all know that Anything can happen at any time. Nobody is immune from any of these. And it, it can cause a lot of stress if these issues are not dealt with on a compassionate basis. Um, and it also then, you, you will get payback in the long term as well from the members if you actually, from the teachers in the school, it's, it works. <clears throat> it always says, treat your, your best asset is the teachers and your staff in the school. And that works between colleagues as well. So basically, on. On that basis, without going into every kind of different scenario, um, we're going to actually hand over now for questions. I, I should have said at the start, this will be very short. I think most of the information will come from people potentially asking questions in different scenarios. So at um, this point, unless they're I'm just looking to see if there's anything um, in the... Yeah, there's no questions at this point in the chat or in the Q&A. So if you wish to, to do that, um, or raise your hand to speak. We have that facility as well. So um, 